introduce both last speakers of this afternoon. The first one is Artur Lopez from the Universidad Federal de Rio Grande do Sul, Porto Alegre. In fact, he was my advisor in my master's degree, and he received his PhD degree at IMPA. His advisor was a copalis. He obtained the, the PhD degree in 1977, or something like this. Okay, he will talk about this thermodynamics, etc. Artur, va per Frenchy. First, I'd like to thank the organizer for the invitation to talk here. It is a great pleasure to be here celebrating the uh, Jacopalis birthday. Uh, I... No? Ah, my thought? Uh, okay. uh, it's a great pleasure for me to be here. I was Jacopalis student, and it was a great honor for me to be student of Jacopalis. And the personality of Jacopalis was an inspiration for all my life, for his uh, personality and for his uh, nice qualities. Uh, before talking on mathematics, I'd like to uh, give my uh, congratulations to Jacob. Uh, Jacob is one of that persons that the uh, more you know, more you admire. And <clears throat> I'd like to uh, mention the contribution of Jacob for the development of mathematics in Brazil. Uh, the beginning of the uh, un uh, graduated courses in mathematics in Brazil begins with uh, more or less in the time that Jacob come back from the United States. And then uh, I'd like to give my testimony that uh, since I finished my PhD with Jacob Palis, I was, uh, well, I speak in part. I testemunhei along those years the inegável liderança que o Jacob exerceu junto aos órgãos financiadores as instituições governamentais brasileiras, no sentido de apoiar as várias iniciativas da comunidade matemática, dos cursos de pós-graduação que estavam começando, e o Jacó sempre foi a cara da matemática junto a esses órgãos. O Jacó exerceu esse papel de liderança com extrema sabedoria, generosidade e elegância, o que levou a comunidade matemática a reconhecê-lo como seu líder natural. E isso é muito importante você ter líderes com a atitude positiva, isso o Jacó exerceu, como todos nós sabemos, com extrema sabedoria. Então, a matemática brasileira ocupa hoje um papel destacado na comunidade científica internacional. A gente teria dificuldade em apontar uma pessoa que se pudesse dizer que contribuiu mais para isto do que o Jacó Pares, através das suas imensas atividades. Ou seja, ele fazia pesquisa de excelente qualidade, tinha tempo e energia para viajar, para defender a matemática, para expor para a comunidade o que é matemática importante, e todos nós devemos muito, muito aí, isso a ele. Então, falando de matemática, então eu vou uh, falar sobre vários resultados que eu e eu... Ah, yes. I'm sorry. Then, uh, I'm going to talk about some two specific models and uh, we're going to use some uh, results, theoretical results that were developed uh, along the years with several collaborators. And then uh, <coughs> I hope that this example will illustrate how to use uh, good mathematics to show in some spe uh, specific examples that some have some uh, relevance in physics to show uh, and show properties. Then to begin consider a uh, metric space M and a probability on M, on the Borel set, Borel sigma algebra, and uh, consider the shift and the symbolic space of it is complex metric space, and we assume <coughs> the technical condition that uh, the support of the measure is <coughs> the whole metric space. Then <coughs> we uh, can generalize the well operator uh, via this uh, <coughs> a priori probability, in the sense that given a potential 
We associate the whole operator that acts on continuous functions that give a function uh, f. You define a function g that's image by the whole operator on the point x. That means that you integrate e to the power a of x. This is a variable that you integrate in this space and put here a function. Then uh, this define a whole operator <coughs> and the transport or dual of this acts on probability that we denote by L star of A, that acts on measure. We say that the potential is normalized if L of one is one. And in this case, uh, the uh, dual operator, the transport operator, acts on uh, probabilities. And uh, our interest here is mainly uh, to consider that you have a holder potential that has uh, oh, sorry, a holder potential, A, <coughs> and then uh, in this case, the L star of A has a unique fixed point denoted by mu of A, and uh, sometimes we will consider po uh, potentials that are not holder, but has a fixed point, and if it has a fixed point, we say that J, that's log of, J, of A, is called the Jacobian of the uh, <coughs> potential A. In fact, sh uh, should be called one over the Jacobian, but okay, I'm calling Jacobian, of the invariant probability mu of A. Then uh, I'd like to stress this, that I uh, have a normalized potential A for, for this definition, and you have a fixed point and then this probability that's a fixed point when you take j that's log of a uh, is the Jacobian. Let's say this uh, j in the uh, expanding case, this a will be uh, log of the prime and or minus log of the prime and then uh, call uh, j the uh, Jacobian of the invariant probability mu of a. Then when <coughs> m is the counting measure, not a probability, the counting measure we get the classical well operator. I mean, uh, here you are using uh, counting. On the pre image, let's say you have these symbols, you have a sum in one, two, three, D, and this is the classical uh, well operator. And uh, in a recent paper we, uh, with Klockner and Stadbauer, we show that this LA star, when act on this uh, space, of symbols one over D, there's a finite space. This can be a compact mass space, don't have to be finite. But here we're proving when it's finite, is a strong contraction on the Wasserson distance. When M is equal S1, or the interval A of B, then you have the, uh, the symbolic space is S1 to the power N, is sometimes called in statistical mechanics the XY model. When M is a compact matter space, then we call this generalized XY model. I mean, when this, uh, uh, the space of symbols is a metric, compact matter space. Well, we are, we are interested in uh, some problems that are more related to statistical mechanics, then you have uh, spins. Then we are going to talk uh, about several examples. And one of them is when the uh, space is finite, is minus one, one. That means the minus uh, and plus, minus, plus and minus, that means uh, spin minus is spin uh, plus, and the counting measure here. This is one example. Another example is that you can take the interval minus one, one, and consider this a priori probability, and you define the whole operator, and uh, we'll show the result that you can get with this. Other example is ha when you have uh, that space M is uh, not compact, can be a real line, and you have to take a probability, not a measure, to uh, the results that I'm going to talk will work. Then a measure could be, for instance, a phi ADA on the line, when phi is a L1 den density with respect to Lebesgue measure. This would be another kind of example of a priori probability. Then, what I'm claiming is that uh, when you have a, well, a holder potential on the space omega to the power n, we have a uh, holder regularity, and we have the well 
term that I'm going to uh, describe exactly what the, what means. Uh, in the case of the classical case, or the where operator, when you have that the space of symbols plus and minus, represented by minus one and plus, the uh, the where operator is like this. Then you see that uh, here is a a measure is the counting measure. If I divide this by one over two, then the counting measure will be a probability. And then we have to assume that it's a probability to be well defined, the Huel operator. Then uh, the Huel operator is sometimes called the transfer operator. Okay. And then uh, first we present some uh, results concerning the Huel operator and ergodic property for two kinds of potentials. Uh, <clears throat> when the uh, symbolic space is minus one, one, which are important problems in statistical mechanics. One of them is the uh, so-called the prototype potential that is like this. You have these points are one or minus one. You take an absolutely continuous function and you define this uh, function that is well defined. And depending on the sequence A1, this potential can be holder or not holder or uh, several kind of possibilities. Uh, another important model is called the Dyson potential, which is the, of the form given a string of elements in minus one, one. You take the first element and then multiply by the others with these weights. Uh, this is a big difference and uh, this Dyson potential is much, much more complicated than this one because of this first point. But this Dyson model is, <coughs> uh, the Dyson is a famous physicist that passed away recently, and uh, he has results on the lattice N with some uh, things more general that call specification. That's a language that's not so clear for us that work in thermodynamic formalism. But this potential that uh, Dyson considered uh, when you transform for our setting on the symbolic space correspond exactly to this potential. And this potential is, uh, is, uh, is uh, important from the point of view of, uh, statist of statistical physics. Then a particular case that's interesting is that when <coughs> An is a form n to the minus gamma, which decay polynomially with gamma bigger than one, and in this case, this potential, this here and here, they are not holder. And this uh, gives uh, a lot of examples of interesting things that can happen when you are trying to make thermodynamic formulas for potentials that are not holder. When gamma is bigger than two, anyway, you have that the uh, A's is in the Walter class, and then in the Walter class, you have eigenfunction, eigenprobability, with positive support on open set, and you have an equilibrium probability that's unique. It's a, a more general case than, uh, <coughs> than uh, holder. But this has to be bigger than two. And the parameters of that Dyson is particular interest is the more hard case when gamma is bigger than one and smaller than two. In this case, you have phase transition. When gamma bigger than two, you are in Walter class, then you do not have phase transition. Then this is something that we're going to talk later. Very well. <clears throat> then we consider this metric on the uh, symbolic space when M is a compact metric space, and this D is the metric that is on D here, and this gives you a measure on the uh, Bernoulli space where this space of symbol is the metric space M. Then results from this paper on ergodic dynamical system in those in 2015 that give you the, uh, you feel the potential is holder. Here, I mean, consider fixed probability M and a holder potential A. Then there exists a positive holder again function A for the operator L acting on continuous functions and a strictly positive eigenvalue lambda A. That's mean the same thing that is true for the classical 
well operated. Then we say that R is normalized. If R is normalized, then you have the eigenvalue is one, and the eigenfunction is one. It's the simplest case. In the same paper, we show that uh, <coughs> if you consider a fixed probability M, a priori probability, and a holder potential, not necessarily normalized, you can associate a normalized potential taking a co-boundary equation that takes the initial potential log of the eigenfunction minus log of eigenfunction composed with sigma minus log of lambda, as is usual in the classical thermodynamic formulas, and this is potential is normalized. And then there exists a unique fixed point for this uh, operator, dual operator acting on probabilities. And this unique fixed point is uh, something that uh, we mentioned in the beginning that we will be interested in fixed point for the dual of the operator when the potential A is normalized. That came from this. And then the measure, one over uh, the uh, eigenfunction that's positive times the uh, fixed point mu a that's an invariant probability give you a uh, eigenprobability for the dual of the whole operator. And then is, you have two, this, two important ingredients. That is the eigenprobability and the eigenfunction that you multiply the eigenfunction by the eigenprobability and you get the uh, invariant probability. Okay. <clears throat> Then uh, came the questions that uh, one important issue, for instance, in the uh, nice book by Pahi Polycott that uh, study thermodynamic formalism, is the variational principle of pressure. Then you'd like to know that uh, all this theory here that's just adaptation of what is known as the well operator in the classical sense, the only difference is that we have you put an, uh, a priori probability and we uh, would like to stress that this lambda A depends on the a priori probability. You can put different pro a priori probabilities and you could have different eigenvalues. Okay, then uh, <clears throat> let's see what's, what's the main problem. Suppose the metric space is S1. Then you have that this is uh, S1 to the power N. <clears throat> and then we point out that if you have one element, X1, X2, Xn, and S1 to the power N, you see that there is an uncountable number of pre-images. Then if your uh, metric space is not countable, it's the same like this. And then you could think that, okay, then it's, you cannot define entropy because you have an infinite number of points, an un uncountable number of points. And you, when you count, this will be uh, complicated because if you are in the symbolic space with these symbols, the maximum entropy could be log of D. Then if you increase the number of points, then this number increase. But this depends on the way how you count pre-images. And then <clears throat> when you put uh, a priori probability that could be dx here, <clears throat> then you define the well operator using this probability in this specific example. And then uh, <clears throat> you can define entropy from the whole operator in the following way. Then given the pro, a priori probability M and a signifying probability, given the whole operator, you take the potential zero, apply the whole operator in the potential zero, apply in functions V that are holder, integrate with respect to the probability that you want to compute the entropy, and you can define the entropy I put here an M because this entropy depends on the a priori probability. And this gives you what's supposed to be the entropy. And maybe you don't like that this entropy is negative. Uh, I like to point out that uh, depending on the probability, 
and then I'm uh, applying this to uh, probabilities that are hold, hold the Jacobian. The, you can extend this, but I mean, for hold the Jacobian, this gives you uh, what I'm calling entropy, and the point is that this makes sense because uh, what I'm going to explain in the next line, but I just like to uh, mention that uh, this entropy respect to this probability a priori is negative and is zero just when is the ID, IID probability that is the product measure of using this M. In the symbolic space, one over D, let's call uh, the classical entropy of a probability uh, like uh, entropy of Shannon Komogorov. The entropy of Shannon Komogorov uh, has an a priori probability that is hidden. The a priori probability is the counting on one over D. If instead to use the counting, you normalize, then you have the definition of entropy that is exactly this one. I mean, this one is here is just the Komogorov uh, entropy minus log of D. Then when the maximum entropy is the IID with D, with one over D, then this is zero, exactly when the maximum entropy, and this is always negative. Then the entropy, when you go to a symbolic space that's not countable, you realize that, uh, in fact, uh, you are, you, when you use a probability and not a counting measure, and to define the whole operator, you need a probability, not a, a measure. Then you realize that the entropy is more naturally negative. And the, the fact that uh, you can apply <coughs> the whole operator to understand the variational principle of pressure is because when you use the whole operator, you are using the counting measure, and you, when you compute the entropy, you are using the counting measure. Then we can uh, state the uh, maximizing principle pressure that you fix an a priori probability m, you take a whole the potential, you have a eigenvalue, a log of the eigenvalue, that's the pressure, is the supreme of these numbers, and this number is attained when you have the uh, Gibbs probability, that's the equilibrium for the normalized potential A that I just described before. Then uh, I like to stress the following point, that uh, uh, we are used to use uh, dynamics, okay? Then when you compute the entropy via partitions, you are using really the dynamics. And this point of view here is more like to see all of this like convex analysis, like legendary transform, like not in the real uh, dynamic point of view. But this definition of entropy that's like here is uh, quite usual. For instance, uh, in this paper on nonlinearity called a formula for the entropy of the convolution of these probabilities on the circle, you can show the following, that you have two holder Gibbs probabilities for do, to act mod one. And you can adapt all this when you, instead of the shift you have the two act mod, uh, the, uh, act mod one, you can use that this kind of formula, the entropy of the convolution of two uh, Holder gives probabilities is larger or equal to the entropy of the first one, of course, of the entropy of the second one. And this result was initially proved by uh, a very nice paper by Linda Strauss. Mary and Paris. in Annals of Math, 1999. And the proof of this result is not for just holder Gibbs probabilities, but for any kind of invariant probabilities. 
And the result that I'm claiming is here is proved there. Well, uh, the paper is very nice. The proof is extremely complicated. It's very, a lot of pages to prove that. And in some moment, have to use the house dimension of the measure, which is not uh, something that I would say is natural on this context. Very well, if instead of using dynamic partitions, you use this definition, the proof that is there, that's more general because it's for environment probabilities, is a six-line proof. The point is just to find a smart V. If you find a smart V, then you show the inequality. Then you do not use uh, partitions. And of course, in some moments, uh, it's quite usual to use partition to define entropy. But in some problems, like this one, to compute the entropy of a convolution of those two environment probabilities, you have that. In this paper, we also prove a formula for how is the uh, Jacobian of the convolution probability from the Jacobian of J1 and from the Jacobian of G2. Uh, then I like to stress the point that the entropy depends of the a priori probability that you choose. But uh, you can define the relative entropy of two Gibbs probability, and the entropy, uh, the uh, relative entropy, does not depend of the a priori probability. This uh, was proved on this recent paper by myself and Jairo Mengi, uh, where we consider uh, information gain, Kubak, Ebert dimension, entropy production, and the evolution kernel, and uh, where we consider relative entropy, and we extend all these concepts for uh, when the space of symbol is uh, non compact, and then, of course, you need an a priori probability. And then, uh, something that is related to what I'm going to show next in some pictures, in a paper with uh, Leandro Cioletti, uh, in discrete dynamical system. Uh, 2017, uh, we, we show the following. If A is a holder potential and U is an eigenprobability for the dual of the whole operator, not the equilibrium probability, the dual, then for any continuous function, uh, FH, you can compute the entropy of this uh, eigenprobability via the whole operator. Then you take a fixed point Z0, for instance, let's say 1 to the power n, the fixed point, and put here, you put ln to the, to the function a, apply, put a big n, and divide it by this. OK, if you want, in some moment, uh, to uh, suppose you are with a problem, with a holder potential, and you'd like to have an idea of how is the eigenprobability, or how is the eigenfunction, then uh, one important point that I'd like to stress is the following. <clears throat> this is a, a more, more simple problem uh, can be stated. Suppose you have a matrix that's a four by four matrix, and you want to find the eigenvalue and the uh, eigenvector and the eigenvalue. The problem to find the eigenvalue is to have that you know, you need to know the eigenvalue. And the eigenvalue is sometimes hard to know. Then if you want to find some approximate method to see the picture of something or to obtain an approximate value, you would need to know the eigenvalue. But if you want to make a simulation and see, then uh, it's interesting that this term here, if it was lambda n, is the classical uh, par stuff. But then you put this, and this plays the role of lambda n. And then, without knowing what's the eigenvalue, you can have an idea of how this uh, probability is of the eigenprobability when you have a continuous function. This corresponds in statistical mechanics to what is called the thermodynamic limit with boundary conditions. Then this is zero is called the boundary conditions. And one uh, interesting choice is, is one infinity and minus one infinity that could put here. And if the potential is holder, independent of this one, you have the same limit because you have unique eigenprobability. Then let's apply all this to uh, our model that we are interested. That's, for it, first of all, is the prototype potential. That's a potential on mi uh, minus one. That is this one, a1, x1, a2, x2, and xn. 
when this is an absolute continuous sequence, series. Then, uh, for this prototype, in a paper with uh, Cioletti, Denker, and Stadbauer, during a London Mathematics Society, we show that for this potential here, the prototype, it's a non-trivial potential, is an example where you can compute explicitly what is the uh, eigenprobability. This eigenprobability will be an independent probability with weights Vy, the product of probabilities in one of the uh, is a product probability such that VI is of this form, exponential of the sum of the AJs divided by two cosine hyperbolic of two J, and this is the uh, weight of minus one on the time I. Then you take the product, and this is the eigenprobability. When the case uh, of AN is uh, this kind of Dyson, Dyson prototype with N minus gamma, you can show that the eigenfunction is obtained in the following way. You take the zeta function of gamma, subtract the first part, and you have the tail of the zeta function, called this an, alpha n, and then uh, this conf converts if gamma is bigger than two, and then is well defined this function a of x that exponential of alpha 1, x1, alpha 2, x2, alpha n, xn, where alpha n is given by this. And this is the eigen function for the whole operator. Uh, it's interesting to have examples that you, you have everything explicit, because sometimes you want to test if something that you know is true. Then you have one example that you have an eigen probability, the eigen function explicit, and you can try to see what happened, if it is OK or not. A similar result is for the general AN. I'm just uh, showing that for this interesting family that is not a uh, holder, that you can show explicitly the eigenprobability and the eigenfunction that exists by, because it's in the Walter class, but you don't know exactly how it is. But now we have explicitly these values. Uh, <clears throat> then another result on this prototype potentials is uh, a recent result where you take uh, a n between uh, uh, 3 over 2 and 2 that are on the Dyson uh, values. That's not anymore on the uh, Walter class. That uh, it was shown that there, uh, there exists two different measurable eigenfunctions for the action of the well operator in L1. One eigenfunction has support on the eigenprobability and the other on the maximum entropy probability. Then you have this pathology that you can have two eigenprobabilities that are measurable. And this is a kind of pathology that, uh, I don't know if there are other examples, but uh, it's not in water class, and this kind of pathology can happen. Then, <coughs> Uh, I like to, uh, to to stress one more time this uh, <coughs> that some, sometimes when you are working on a problem, you like to have an idea of how is the eigenfunction, how is the eigenprobability, and then an approximation of the eigenfunction. We have first an approximation of the eigenprobability is uh, like this: you take uh, the well operator for a and the point one take a point x and divide it by ln 1 to the power to the point 1 infinity, that's this grows more or less like lambda to the n. And in the end, this, in the good cases, when it's holder, for instance, the uh, convergence to the eigenfunction when n goes to infinity. Then uh, I like to show some pictures. OK. <clears throat> this picture, what means? Uh, I'm taking the symbolic space uh, the symbolic space
and using a binary ex expansion to transform the points that are on the symbolic space for points on the interval minus one, one. Then this is interval minus one, one. And then <clears throat> uh, we take a good potential. A good potential, for instance, is not the, of n to the minus gamma, but this is a potential that is exponentially decreasing, like two to the minus n, and this is Lipschitz, this is Holder, I'm sorry. And is Holder, you know that you have a new cracking function, and then you like to know uh, how good is this approximation. Then, as I said before, for a general family of AN, we have an explicit expression for the eigenfunction. And then you compare the explicit expression for the eigenfunction that is in red, and you take this to the to C set seven of this, and you see that you almost cannot see the difference between the real eigenfunction and the approximation using this method. This works fine, and the velocity is good because it's holder. But we are interested in potentials that not, not holder. But anyway, you like to see uh, pictures of how bad can be this. Then this is the graph of the uh, prototype potential. Uh, it's continuous. It, uh, the picture seems not continuous, but it's continuous. When you have uh, the interesting parameters, when n to the minus gamma, when gamma is 1.8, that's the bad set because gamma is smaller than two. And then we take the potential that is defined on uh, minus one to the n, and you use this identification to plot. Then you use approximation using 37 points. And then you have this picture for the uh, potential. Then you see that there is a lot of that is uh, not good. I mean, it's the fact that it's not a holder. If you have this one, you see that it's very smooth. And this one shows that you, uh, the regularity that you have is not so good. And here's the graph of the eigenfunction using the, that kind of approximation for uh, the uh, parameter n to the power minus gamma with gamma equal 3.3. And this uh, is uh, a lot of, but now when you take the parameter that is smaller than two, it's worst. This is the picture for the a prototype that we show that you can have again function that are not continuous, that are measurable, and this is a kind of picture of what you can have using, in order to plot this identification via a binary expansion. Okay, <clears throat> another model, I'm, now I'm going to talk about models of the kind of XY, that mean uh, not a finite space. Then for instance, when you take uh, the space is the interval minus one, one, which is a priori probability, you consider a general potential of this form. Now the points X1 are on the interval, but anyway, if this sequence AN is uh, summable, absolutely, absolutely summable, you can have that's all defined. Then uh, John Amor uh, studied this kind of XY models and instead you can consider a more general set of functions on this interval, the power n, that are a prototype, that means you take a lot of functions, f, defined on interval minus one, one, and you make a sum, and this is a generalization of what we have before for the top prototype, and if it is uh, the uh, Lipschitz constants of these functions, are going to like one over two to the j, this function will be Lipschitz, and you can apply all the theory that I said before, and you have an explicit expression for the eigenfunction from, uh, here's the tail, you put here the product, and here is explicitly the eigenfunction, now you have to integrate respect to b, to db, that's uh, <coughs> this, uh, this density. Then uh, this expression of HA is the eigenprobability, and I have expression for the eigenfunction of probability. And then uh, to uh, stress that all this can be, 
obtained for more general setting. Uh, in a paper with uh, Victor Vargas, we can understand uh, Gibbs states on the space R to the power n. I mean, you are applying here when the space is not uh, compact, but you can have uh, results and then give you a Lipschitz potential on this uh, XY model. You can find uh, the whole operator as soon as you take a, a density that has to be calibrated with respect to the potential, and you can have you can show well operator is true. Now let's come to the Dyson case that is uh, more difficult to work. Then <coughs> interesting case is when the uh, a n are n to the minus gamma. When gamma is bigger than two, as I said, we are in the Walters class. Then eigenfunction in eigenprobabilities do exist. Then uh, we have a result for the Dyson that is the following. We, uh, given the space uh, minus one, one, we can consider a partial order, that is this one, uh, two elements on this space omega. One is smaller than the other if xj is smaller than ij for all j. I mean, this value could be just one and minus one on this case. But this is a, a partial order. Then a function is called increasing if all pairs of points x and y, if these points are bigger, the values of the function is bigger. And then a probability over this uh, symbolic space is said satisfy the fkg inequality if for any uh, pair of functions that are increasing f and g, you have this inequality that's called the F, FJK inequality. And then we show in this paper on stochastic numbers 2019 that uh, it's true that for the Dyson potential, uh, the eigenprobability satisfy the uh, FKJ property. Uh, then in the uh, <coughs> Dyson model, I like to uh, point out an interesting result by Jonathan, Ober, and Polycott that they show in mathematical proof, because Dyson has proved, but I mean, the physical proof. I, I, I never understood it. Okay. But it, it's considered a proof by, by physicists. Then they show that uh, in this paper on stochastic dynamic 2019, that indeed, for the Dyson parameters, that mean gamma between one and two, there exists some uh, values gamma, not, not all of gamma between one and two, but it is on the Dyson region where there exists phase transition. I mean that you can uh, get eigenprobabilities that ob is obtained in that way that I just mentioned. And one interesting point is that one probability came with the, from the boundary condition one infinity that you pull back, and the other came from the minus one infinity. And this gives you two probabilities called nu minus, nu plus, and nu minus, and this is, is a phase transition. In fact, uh, they show that there exists two DLR probabilities for this continuous potential, and, uh, but in this paper by Leandro Cioletti, myself, and Stad Bauer, we show that it's equivalent to be DLR or to be eigenprobability. In physics, it's more common the people call it DLR. That does not matter with this. But I mean, uh, this result was for DLR, and to say that you have two eigenprobabilities, you need to be sure that you have an equivalence of DLR and eigenfunctions, eigenprobabilities. Uh, another interesting paper that I'd like to mention is a paper by Klockner called An Optimal Transportation Proof for the Decay Correlation for Non-Expanding Maps that he considered uh, the following. He considered <coughs> for a given alpha and beta the Banach space of functions with models of continuity of this form. If alpha is bigger than, z than zero, this is more or less like a holder but I mean, you have this, put, put, could, could put here zero, and this model of continuity. And using this model of continuities, 
he is able to show a quite interesting result that's the following. Uh, it is a general, alpha can be zero, but and given beta, you take the functions, the potentials that are on this class that has model of continuity, <clears throat> and then you define <clears throat> the well operator acting not on this uh, function with this beta, but with a, a worse beta, a little bit worse. And then he showed that you have a well theorem because the well operator for this potential leaves invariant the set of these functions, and then he has some kind of well theorem with all that you, you can have, not for all functions, but for a, a, a certain set of functions. And he showed that for this function, you have polynomial decay correlation of this order. And <clears throat> uh, the proof of he, he, he did is uh, adapting uh, the metric that he used in using again the result that I just mentioned that the, uh, the Wasserstein distance uh, is a contraction, the Wasserstein distance for the dual of the operator. He used this, move them, uh, change the metric and obtain the result that he wants. Uh, <clears throat> then, uh, the proof of this is the following, the following way. You take uh, the, the classical usual distance, that's the first time they are different, and you define this KAR, that is, take points that are, are close, and the soup of this, and call AN the sum. And we can show that for Dyson, with gamma bigger than two, uh, bigger than, than two, okay. Then uh, you have this, uh, Estimation not of just of A, but for the sum. And we have this model of continuity. And then we are able to show that for the Dyson potential, the models of continuity can be taken as this value. You see that alpha equal one. And with this, in the, the, in the parameters of Glockner beta equal gamma minus two and alpha equal zero. And the Dyson model, when gamma bigger than three, we can see that for functions that are on this smaller set, we have for this function, you have polynomial decay correlation of order gamma minus three. This uh, was uh, shown in this paper that is going to be uh, appear with uh, Cioletti, Hatashi, myself, and Sad Bauer. And uh, these bounds are, are uh, at, uh, achieved by some moments. And then I like just to show some pictures. Here's the Dyson potential uh, when gamma is uh, two, the Dyson potential when gamma is 1.3. And here is the eigenfunctions for the Dyson potential using that approximation. Here is Z4. And then you see, uh, here on the right, you have Z5 black and Z6 in red. I mean, you see that it's almost converging to something, and the uh, eigenfunction for this Dyson model should be of uh, bad behavior like this, and you can see that uh, this looks like a, a measurable eigenfunction that you can delimit. Then uh, I stop here.